Last time on Mastering AMC 1012, we covered the polynomial root representation and how it can be used to simplify even the hardest of problems from Usamo and Amy to something that's easily solvable. Today, we're talking about symmetric polynomials and polynomial manipulations. And we'll see how this could make a problem that's hard to solve with Vietas easy by just changing the polynomial. So first of all, what is a symmetric polynomial? A polynomial with coefficients equal on both sides. Here's an example of one, 3x squared plus 6x plus 3, because 3 is equal to 3 and 6 as well equal to itself. It could also be bigger like this, 3x cubed plus x squared plus 3x plus 1. 1 is equal to 1, 3, 3, and 1. Okay, so now that we know what symmetric polynomials are, is there anything else we can do besides the standard methods to solve them? Well, this is a very clever trick. And the trick is if we have one of degree n and of even degree, we can just divide by n by 2 and then use this over here. Okay, so let's just see an example of how this actually works. So the real number x satisfies the equation x plus 1 over x equals root 5. We're asked to find this. So the trick to solving these types of problems is, first of all, is this symmetric? The answer is actually no, because the x to the 11 term is not equal to the x to the 0 term. But it is almost a symmetric polynomial. Almost. Except we can just factor out x cubed, because then it will be x to the 8th minus 7x to the 4th plus 1. And this is a symmetric polynomial because 1 is equal to 1 and negative 7 equal to itself. So now we can do the standard symmetric polynomial trick. And what we do here is because the degree is 8, we divide by x to the 4 to just this part. We can leave the x cube on the side. So let's divide x to the 8th minus 7x to the 4th plus 1 over x to the 4. We get x to the 4 minus 7 plus 1 over x to the 4. And because we divided by x to the 4, let's also multiply by x to the 4 over here. So now, essentially what we have is x to the 7, x to the 4 times x cubed, times x to the 4 plus 1 over x to the 4 minus 7. Now take a look at this. x to the 4 plus 1 over x to the 4. We know the value of x plus 1 over x. It's equal to root 5. So, remember what we learned earlier? We know that x squared plus 1 over x squared is just this right here, squared minus 2, equals 3. And we have x to the 4th plus 1 over x to the 4th equals 3 squared minus 2, which is 7. So that means this is just x to the 7 times 7 minus 7. 0. The answer is just 0. That is it for this problem. So going back to here, essentially to solve any symmetric polynomial, all we do is we divide by half of the power of the largest coefficient, and then we group terms like this. So x cubed plus 1 over x cubed, for example, and x squared plus 1 over x squared, or even just x plus 1 over x. So we just have, and then what we do is we make the substitution, and then we just rewrite our polynomial. And the advantage of this is now our polynomial is of less degree. And now it's much easier to solve. Now let's see one more example. This looks like another scary polynomial, but we're about to use symmetric polynomials. First of all, is this polynomial symmetric? Well, of course not, because 10,000 is not equal to 1. 5,000 is not equal to 50. But they do look very close to being 1, don't they? After all, 5,000 is just 100 times more, and 10,000 is just 10,000 times more than 1. So it looks like there's something going on with powers of 10 here. And it also looks like we've just got a bunch of zeros on this left side here. 
this is a sign to do something. And if you watch the algebraic manipulation video, you would know that always be on the lookout for smart substitutions. And in this case, a smart substitution would be y equals 10x. Why? Because y, if y equals 10x, then this becomes just y to the 4. Because y to the 4 is 10 to the 4 times x to the 4. Then this is minus 5000x cubed, so minus 5 times y cubed. y cubed is 1000x cubed, plus a25x squared. Well, y squared is just 100x squared, so it would be y squared times 8.25. I'll just write it like that for now. And then minus 50x, 50x is just 5y divided by 10, plus 1, there's no x's here, no substitution to be done. Now this polynomial looks a lot smaller, and it looks a lot more symmetric, doesn't it? 1, 1, negative 5, negative 5, 8.25. This is a symmetric polynomial of even degree, and we know how to solve those. We must divide by y squared to the whole polynomial. 0 divided by y squared is just 0. So we have y squared minus 5y plus 8.25, just a constant, minus 5 over y, plus 1 over y squared. Now we group these terms together and these terms together. This gives us y squared plus 1 over y squared minus 5 times y plus 1 over y plus 8.25. And we know to what to do from here. We make the substitution. Let's say it doesn't really matter what variable you use, but let's say a equals y plus 1 over y. Then y squared plus 1 over y squared is just a squared minus 2. We learned that earlier, because if you square it and expand it, we end up with an extra 2 times y times 1 minus 1 over y term. So we can rewrite this in terms of a, a squared minus 2 minus 5a plus 8.25. Now let's simplify. We have a squared minus 5a plus 6.25 equals 0. Aha! This looks like a binomial a minus 2.5 squared because 2.5 squared is just 6.25. And the only solution here is 2.5. Now we're not done. Careful, 2.5 isn't our answer. We want x, not a. So we can just plug it back. It's not too hard from here. a equals 2.5 equals y plus 1 over y. So now there's two ways to go from here. One is to notice that, oh, if y equals 2, this is just 2 plus a half. But y can also be a half, and then it would be 1 half plus 1 over a half, which is, this just becomes 2. So 2 and a half again. So those are two roots. But it's not always that easy to see, so you can always just multiply by y to the whole equation, and solve the quadratic. We end up with y squared minus 2.5y plus 1. So, so from here what we can do is you can just multiply by 2 and then you can just do standard factoring trick whatever one doesn't really matter or you can just use quadratic formula. I'll just use the quadratic formula 5 plus or minus square root of 25 minus 4 times 4, 16 over 4. This gives us two solutions. And square root of 25 minus 16 is square root of 9, which is 3. 5 plus or minus 3 over 4. That's either 2 or half. Same solutions we got earlier by our kind of guessing, guessing method. So now we know what the values of y could be. But we, we want x. So from here, we just know that y equals 10x. So x is y over 10. Divide by 10 to each of these, we get 2 tenths, which is 1 fifth, and then 1 half divided by 10, 
which becomes 1 over 20. So our answers are just 1 over 20 and 1 fifth. Those are the two answers for this problem. Clever application of symmetric polynomials and a smart substitution because they look almost symmetric. Always be on the lookout. Sometimes they may not be exactly symmetric, like we also saw here. There's an extra x cubed we have to pull out. But they're close enough, and then you know you should probably do something related to this. Next off, we've got polynomial manipulations. So in a polynomial with roots r1 through rn, what if you want to construct a polynomial with roots that are all reciprocals of it? Well, it's very simple. We just flip the coefficients. Yes, literally, that's it. So for example, let's say we have 3x squared plus 9x plus 4, and this has roots r and s. Now, if we want to construct a quadratic, or any polynomial for that matter, with roots 1 over r and 1 over s, we just flip the coefficients. So 4x squared plus 9x plus 3. We move the 4 here and the 3 here. And this is true for larger polynomials as well. Now, why is this useful? Well, let's say a problem is asking you for 1 over r plus 1 over s. Now, you can use vietas, or you could just flip the coefficients to give a new polynomial and then just use vietas, vietas to find the sum of the roots directly of that new polynomial. And that would be the sum. Now, here's another concept roots that are more or less. In a polynomial with roots r1 through rn, let's say we construct another polynomial, but instead of x, we have kind of x minus k. This polynomial will have the same roots as the first polynomial, except they'll all be plus k, so k bigger. Why is this true? Well, let's say this has roots r, s, blah, blah, blah. I'll just say, to make it easy to understand. That means when we plug in r, for example, this whole thing becomes 0. But what about in this over here? If you plug in r plus k, then this term over here just simplifies to r. So it essentially becomes the same polynomial. So what does that really mean then? So essentially what that means is that if you want to construct a polynomial with roots that are each k bigger, we just put x minus each of that, that k that we want to make each of our roots bigger by and replace that with x. And remember, it's not plus k, it's minus k. So if you want to make the roots more, we make it minus k because then these k's will cancel out. And polynomial are very useful when you're evaluating things like this. Now, this is a mess to calculate with Vietas, right? So what we would do is two steps. One, construct, let's say our, our polynomial was 3x cubed plus 7x squared plus 6x minus 4 equals 0. So this has roots r, s, and t. We flip the coefficients to get negative 4x cubed plus 6x squared plus 7x plus 3, right? We just flip all the coefficients. And once we flip all the coefficients, this over here has roots 1 over r, 1 over s, 1 over t. Now, we, what we also can do is say that let's plug in instead, let's plug in x plus 3 over here. So if we plug in x plus 3 over here, we have 7, we have this over here. And this has roots that are, that are all going to be 3 smaller. Right? Because it's always opposite. If this is x, if you put in x plus 3, now this will have roots r minus 3, s minus 3, and t minus 3. And now we can do even more from here. We can manipulate this even more. Now, let's say we expand this out, which I'm not going to do. But we could do that and then flip the coefficients again. And that would be a polynomial with roots 1 over r minus 3, 1 over s minus 3, 1 over t minus 3. And now from this polynomial, all you would have to do is find the cube of all your roots. You just sum the cubes of all your roots, and we've done problems like that in previous episodes, so we know that how to do that using our expansion. 
So that shows how we can make something like this, this complex expression over here, just a problem of adding cubes and its VNS with a different polynomial. And that's why polynomial manipulations are very useful, like on this example from the AMC 12. Let g of x be a polynomial with leading coefficient 1, whose three roots are reciprocals of the three roots of this over here, where 1 is less than a is less than b is less than c. What is g of 1 in terms of a, b, and c? Okay, well, first of all, g of x is a polynomial whose three roots are the reciprocals of this thing. Well, we know our polynomial manipulations, right? So we know that we can construct some other polynomial. Let's say f, I, let's just call it a of x. It doesn't really matter. a of x, we can just put c as the coefficient for x cubed, b as the coefficient for x squared, a as the coefficient for x, and 1 as the coefficient for the constant, because we just put that here. And we know this, this cubic will have roots that are all reciprocals of f of x. Now we're saying that g of x is a polynomial with reciprocal roots, but uh-oh, it has a leading coefficient of 1. And our polynomial has leading coefficient c, which is more than 1, as we see in the problem statement. It's more than 1. So if, the, if c is more than 1, then how can we make the same polynomial? That's how can, can you make a polynomial with the same roots, but with leading coefficient only 1? We just divide by c, of course, because the roots won't change if we divide by a constant. If something is equal to 0, when multiplied by a constant, it will still be equal to 0. So we divide by c to get x cubed plus b over c x squared plus a over c x plus 1 over c. So now this is g of x. What is g of 1? We just plug in 1. This becomes 1 plus b over c plus a over c plus 1 over c. This is a plus b plus 1 over c plus c over 1, which is just a plus b plus c over plus 1 over c. Cover application of polynomial manipulations. We literally barely had to do any algebra here because there was no VS involved. We just flip. Isn't it cool how we just have to flip the coefficients to get reciprocals? It's not some other complicated algorithm. That's another cool example, and there's a bunch of practice problems you can check out in the free AMC 1012 book, link in the description. Next time, we're going to discuss arithmetic sequences which are another common topic on the AMC 1012 and have some unique, interesting applications and use many of the techniques we've already learned. But we'll be checking that out in this video over here. You can check that out by just clicking right there.